uh, session, like a 10 or 15 minute session to discuss uh, the ideas about having um, making our own router. And it would be really important if we could have as much as feedback from you. Uh, we, we are just going to discuss a bit the specs and what, what would make sense. An important thing that um, is that wh what I was discussing with Paul earlier. At first sight, it might seem like it's not very important for Europe uh, making a router that is uh, thought at first for communities outside of Europe. But there is a big difference between having a law that doesn't, uh, that doesn't let you flash this and manf uh, manufacturers blocking that, but and so you, you don't have any hardware available in order for you to break the law. There is a difference between that and having the hardware and having that hardware be illegal in your country. So if, you, if we have the hardware outside of Europe and you can bring it illegally, for example, it's a very different situation because then you can have um, civil disobedience. Yes? If we don't have any alternative here, then um, the, the situation will be very much different. That's what, that's what I was trying to explain yesterday. So, uh, so this is why I think that we must also make this step and make it um, in a very bold way. So if you want to join, we, we are going to gather here, discuss a bit the specs and mostly hear from you. What, what do you think about this idea? So, there, no, there is a pad as well online where we are writing a proposal for funding. Yeah, just gather in the middle of the room and let's have a nice discussion. This is this is not yet the <laughs> This is not yet a, a, a public uh, proposal, but we are treating it in increasingly bigger um, circles, and we want to take this opportunity, this very unique opportunity of having the battle mesh right now. Um, Okay. So if you want to if you want to get into a pad mm, boom. <laughs> Maybe it's not this. So it's this. This is this is for a proposal for a, a Latin American funding um opportunity that is going to close on uh, May 13, so in, in uh, like next week. Um, you, you can read the, the proposal, it's kind of lengthy, but it's, it's nice to get the, the perspective. And here we are defining some interesting characteristics that, for example, I've been discussing with Batman people, and for, for them this is not very interesting, but for other people it might be, or we are open to suggest suggestions to make it better. The focus... The pet is open. Yeah, this is open to public, right? You mean the pad? Um, not yet, like this is... This is a proposal that we are going to present as Altermundi initially, but with other, with other um, 
partner organizations, like it's going to be on our name because it needs to be a, one organization, but we've been talking with other organizations that you can see there. Yes, it's a public part. Yes, it's public, but we're just not posting the address on mailing lists or things like that because it's, it's not necessarily the idea. It's you should not send the link to your friends yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What? Yes, 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 yes. It's going to be public. The, the Frida call, this is for example, um, this is for example something we presented last year and we won this prize. It was a little of amount of money, it was like maybe $3,000 as a prize and then $6,000 um, as like to fund uh, a specific task. And um, yeah, and, and this is public. Like, there is a public list of things funded that by this uh, initiative. This is this is um, money from LACNIC, which is equivalent of RIPE of the regional authority. Is, is the regional Internet Authority? But yes, it's of Latin America and Caribbean. And this is just a, a template that we are um, writing to present also to other funding opportunities, like uh, maybe ISOC, there, there is an ISOC funding opportunity. Like, um, the idea is to take the chance of building uh, our own router that fits the, our use case. So. Does anyone have a comment or a question or? So, so if I read your specs, I cannot see any specifics about the radio. So, are there ideas? Uh, I remember there was some discussion on the Battle Mesh mailing list. Uh, what radio you can do or which radio type you should not do. Um, any comments about this from you? This is, this, is, uh, this is what I've been discussing with Felix and also uh, Batman team because they have the most experience. Steve is, is Steve uh, Song is also in the, in the, as a partner or in the team but he doesn't have like as much as experience as, as Felix or as, uh, is, he's not author, authoritative as, as Felix. So uh, this is all, all recent, very recent feedback. What we have is some quote from uh, Dragino, which is one of the manufacturers, uh, which are these specific specs. From what I uh, talked with, with the Batman team, we will not get to a working. Uh, we, we will not get a working hardware on the first uh, batch, for like there is no chance of that happening. But but it will be a step towards that goal. That goal. So this is just to to have an idea of what what's possible. This is a very small batch, so 200 routers, something that we can afford with the money from this. Um, grant and yeah can you maybe describe what you want to use the router for exactly okay that's a good question Going back to some photos, basically for this, this kind of node that we've been deploying in, in several networks around Latin America. 
which works for this use case. And here inside, it's currently a TP-Link. So our, like our base, basic objective would be to replace that with something better. If we can get something better for the same money, then it's a definitely a win situation. But you mean you need to replace... You need to replace it because of the FCC lockdown? Or? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Because so that's the incentive. Because there is no such thing as a non-EU or US version okay. mm -hmm. of any hardware at all. <laughs> there are some non-US versions of some hardware, but there is no such thing as a... Uh, so in your specs, it says uh, that you're building a device with two 5 gigahertz uh, radios. And I think it might be interesting to have the mini PCIe card in there be dual band. So you could choose whether you want to have a, a pure mesh node with two 5 gigahertz interfaces or if you want to like replicate the network on a 2.4 as well. Uh, I, I don't, don't totally understand yet what does um, this mean? This is a conversation between Nico and the Dragino uh, sp spoke person. But what I, I, I don't know, I understand that. So, so this is uh, how much more expensive it would make it for the built-in uh, chip. But you could, I mean, I, maybe you can also look into the price difference if you yeah. leave the, the five gigahertz path in the 9344 as it is and use a dual band mini PCIe card. Okay, yes. That's because that that, then it wouldn't require any more changes to the board, it's just swapping out the card and maybe you can get some one that's similarly priced. But yeah. Well, that, th those are the ideas that, thank you very much. Um, so. Or you could even have uh, two two variants of it. With a card, it's very easy because you don't need to make any further board changes. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you, if you uh, want to support also 2.4 gigahertz, um, you also have to think about the additional circuitry. So you need 2.4 filters. You cannot just replace a 5 gigahertz card with 2.4. It has different antennas, different circuitry, so you need, there will be additional cost uh, if you want to support both bands and just swap the card. Mm. Um, and also, of course, the mini PCI Express uh, port and, and, the, and the chips you need to run this will add like $1.5 to $2 uh, on your uh, board cost. Uh, one, one thing I saw is uh, the PoE. I think you can add passive PoE for almost no cost. So if you, I saw 802.3 AF, yeah. but I don't see anything now. Also about um, power supply, um, I believe it's much more useful, especially in rural areas, to have a wide voltage range regulator and passive PUE, ideally starting as low as 10 to 12 volts or even 9 volts and being capable to up to 30 volts. There are voltage regulators um, which are not that cheap if they're good and efficient in such a wide range, but it's yet much cheaper than providing true 802.3 AF support and it's much more useful if you're on a battery supplied or alternative energy environments. Yeah, just, just to clarify, this was something that the Dragino person said because like, we didn't ask specifically for this. Like, uh, but yes, we, we are thinking about passive power, which is what we've been doing all this time. But then make sure that the, vo the voltage range and the efficiency is, is, is nice. I know that the village telco people have quite some experience in that, supposedly. Yeah, the, um, what the, the tp links that we've been using until now, which are the 3500, which are slightly different from the, from the ones that we have here, actually support voltage between like 6 volt and 24 volts, which has been like a great... Um, 
I know the 4,300 TP-Links we got here, they work up to about 13.2, and if you go above, the fuse blows, and then you just have to bridge the fuse, and then they go up to 20 or something. Okay, nice. Well, the, the, the 3,500 it work, works out of the box up to 24 volts. Yes, and, and, and the 3,600 doesn't, like, it blows. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is more or less the the features or the kind of thing we we want to we want to have. So I still didn't got the use case, um, and I think it's maybe good if you write it down. Maybe it's already written down. I don't know. Um, for example, I don't get if you only build point to point links or mostly point-to-point -point links, uh, then why don't you build a board with uh, PCI Express or something which is modular, where you can just swap the, the cards and then um, have very modular, uh, flexible setup which you can use for different situations? Yes. Um, in, in We've been doing this... Uh, so to, to clarify this um, this thing here, this is actually mostly two point-to-point -point links. You can think of it. Um, and most of the nodes in this town are just two antennas. Some of them are four or like they have one extra antenna to do some longer distance link, but most of them um, are just point-to-point -point or Yes, we, you could think it as point to point. And the thing is that currently, um, these two antennas are dual band, like it's dual radio but on different bands, and one of the bands, like the 2.4 band, starts not working at all when you reach a very small density of nodes. So we, but, but for example at night, which has no noise on 2.4, then everything works very, very, very nice. Like you can push 40 megabits around the town along four or five hops with no problem. So with two five gigahertz, we could get, we, we hope to get that throughput during the day as well because all the clients are on 2.4 and just use the 2.4 AP for client access. Which is very similar, but using different devices to what they do in Giphy meshes, which is just several ubiquities connected, and in Linux as well, several ubiquities connected via cables. The only thing that here, it would be like, Instead of two different devices, just one device is with two antennas, or even four antennas, but yeah. Yeah, I have two remarks regarding your specifications. Um, point one is, I believe that 16 megabytes of flash memory might be a bit tight. Did you consider adding more, like 32 or 64 megabytes of flash memory? Six, 16 of, of 32 or 64, like doubling or uh, no. doubling the amount, because with all the, uh, I mean, in the future you you uh, need to heavily rely on crypto. You have the DNS sec and stuff like that, so everything is going to grow a fair bit. Uh, you need to consider uh, hosting crypto libraries, certificates, uh, stuff like that. So 16 megabytes uh, of flash could be. Uh, could be a two, uh, two less, two, uh, too few. Okay. You probably need more. And okay. the second remark is um, you should consider adding a real-time clock component, an RTC to the system. A real? Real-time clock, an RTC, to be able to keep the time through reboots or power outages or stuff like that. Because uh, also considering DNS sec and other cryptographic extensions, you will need a reliable time source. So maybe consider adding one, or at least, uh, yeah, ask the the device manufacturers whether it's possible to add them. But isn't it enough to just do NTP directly after 
having uplink. So that's a chicken egg problem because in order to get to the uplink, you might need to verify a certificate. So how will you do that without a valid time? That's a chicken egg. Okay, point taken. <laughs> France was also suggesting, France Berm was also suggesting that m m it might be very cheap as well to add a GPS module. Then someone else said that maybe it's not that cheap, but anyway. And if we have that, we might dream into, but this is all, all of a dream coming true up so far, we might dream uh, to have at some point some kind of TDMA on that, like it's been done in the past and we could do it today. Like the idea is to get, um, we, we are confident that we can raise enough money with this project on different funding um, things that we might be able to pay for development. For, for that. The, the idea of all of this is like Dragino, for example, is like an open source hardware manufacturer and all the software that will run in this is open source and, or libre, libre, libre software. Uh, and so the idea is to bring more money into the open, libre open source ecosystem from foundations that normally don't necessarily put money into that. Like, if you look at this, you will see some... <laughs> I hate the internet in this place. <laughs> um, so if you look at the list of projects, some are, are nice, some are not that nice, but not necessarily open source or anything. So we can attract money from these foundations into, and, and put it into nice people. That, that, would, uh, that would be an idea as well. We just had this super clever idea to maybe add a USB port, which is to some sources quite cheap to add, and then you can maybe add some more space to your router. We didn't have many good experience with USB ports, but I think it depends. What? Huh? Oh, I just said sometimes or often USB simply tends to be unstable regarding uh, power supply and uh, general stability, so maybe you do not want to rely on it. Without the details, I had that general feeling as well, like I don't rely a lot on it, but it might work, I don't know. We are not considering that because of this gut feeling, but if someone thinks that it's a very clever idea <laughs> and have, uh, has some proofs about it. Uh, does anyone think that this, this specific uh, hardware would be useless in your communities or have some use or would you make it something different and maybe it had some use? Who considers it, it absolutely useless? Like a two radio, two five gigahertz radio on one device. Huh? Okay, very useful. What is that useful? <laughs> So, okay. sorry, but I have to interrupt for short. We uh, need to prepare for the dinner in a couple of minutes. So I think okay. two or three more comments and uh -huh. then I'll finish this session. Anybody, any comment? So comment from, uh, regarding your last question, now how useful would I find such thing? Um, <clears throat> let's say if, the, if you as a community design a community hardware and you present such a list of specs, that's a, let's say good, a good choice of current, how should a proper board look like? No? I would say, okay, 
fine. Um, I might find also the other way around you know, what, what I'm doing now. I'm looking what boards are available and pick one or two or three. What I totally miss here is the question of a board that attracts me to build into my community has also the question of how easy can I put enclosure, antennas on it? How easy is it deployable? Yeah. So, for instance, where Ubiquity did somehow an, a new way of, okay, look, this is different designs that are quite weatherproof, easy to install. No? If you just present me a new box with a shitty aluminum case that I have to cover again with my own enclosure, where I have to put again <laughs> three meters of cable and adapt a standard antenna to it, is not much F benefit. Yeah. And um, the point you mentioned, um, what might be attractive, even if you design the same, same board as, let's say, a, a peeling company is doing. If you could provide a nice way of, if you buy the board here, the community board, a certain percentage is going back to the community. If I, with my payment to you, no, are sure there's a somehow followable way of, okay, this is my price I pay, and even if it's a bit more expensive, but this goes back to the bloody community I belong as well to, um, then I would buy your board. This, I would call this a benefit. Yeah. Yeah. Just a follow-up remark in regard to the case. I think it would make sense to um, just orientate ourselves at the selection of existing cases. And like many of the outdoor antennas, they have uh, backpack cases for boards. And usually they're meant to be connected to a Microtik hardware. So if you just consider that, the, where does Microtik have their holes for the screws and what kind of antenna connector do they use? That might provide good hints to already existing cheap casing and antennas. Yeah, um, Franz from Austria, uh, he also mentioned the, this RF elements uh, manufacturers. We've done, we've, we've, we've used those cases in the past for tp links so we put the tp link inside those cases and it's it, it's a possibility to to like we we have yet to ask a quote from them what if this would make sense but yes we, we are definitely um like we are going to use this stuff so we we have the same uh needs maybe we, we yes um so we, so far, the idea is to make it kind of like a rocket or something. So you, you have like SMA connectors and a, a waterproof case, and that it's compact and, and it has PoE support and everything you would expect from a rocket, but with two radios and mm -hmm. running uh, lead or libre mesh in, inside so that that is flashable what, what i mean is that is flashable and it has better specs so 16 or 32 or more mega megabytes of flash and things like this and uh i didn't quite get the second part of your question but uh about this of the communities and and things I, I, I'm not sure I got it, but okay. Um, in any case, I think it's it's important because not everyone knows us that we are just uh, like people from communities in South America that now uh, are thinking about like we thought it uh, many years ago, but it didn't make uh, much sense, and now it seems like we have an opportunity of doing our custom. Uh, a, a hardware that is customized to our needs, but there is no, um, I, like, there is no, there is not yet a, uh, a business plan or anything. We're just trying to bootstrap it with grant money and make it solve our needs. But if, but we want to uh, take the opportunity to make it something wider that helps more people, like even people in Europe that are also affected by the same rules, but from another standpoint. So if, if, if we can fund develop, development work, like what Felix has been doing with uh, money from companies, 
So we, we can give money as communities, not as companies, but we communities can give money to the developers. I think that would be a great step.